I'm, I'm looking, this has been really interesting for me to, I've been following this discourse for quite a while, I've been pretty much invisible, and uh, I'm looking forward to touching base with all of you during the next couple of days, it's going to be fun. Um, I'm a researcher, and I'm just down the road here in the Centre for Neural Engineering in Melbourne University, and uh, I have a, my, my only mission is artificial general intelligence. And uh, I think that in the next few years I'll be making some significant progress in the hardware where I'll probably dif uh, have uh, vigorous discussion with everybody is that the, the singularity, I believe, has absolutely got nothing to do with computing. It's not going to be done with computers. Uh, you can get your head around that at some point. Um, what I think we heard earlier the word replication used. Replication is not simulation and replication is not emulation. Replication is replication. That's what I'm doing. So a replicated fire is fire. Artificial light is light. Uh, artificial flight flies. And in my case, artificial cognition cognizes. And it's got nothing to do with computing. It's to do with replicating what this is doing. Now the reason why, I, I don't understand why nobody's ever done this, because they haven't. Um, but this, the game has changed in the last two years. There's uh, brain material is about to undergo a profound transformation in our understanding of what is going on in there. It used to be all action potential signaling, and it's no longer that. It's action potential signaling mutually interacting with a, a unified electromagnetic field system, and the two resonate with each other. So therefore, to replicate, you need action potentials, you need a field system. Do it inorganically in a chip, nest and uh, you nest and uh, align groups of these chips with each other, and you end up with structures like cortex. And uh, so I'm over there at the very beginnings of doing an experiment on the very first processing element in that structure with fields and an action potential. Uh, so it's interesting that all the numbers that have been thrown about to do with the singularity, to me, are actually only useful in so far as they specify chip geometries and densities and stuff that computing is irrelevant. A simulated brain is not a brain. It never will be. No amount of computing will ever do it. That would be my position. So I'm sort of not anywhere near where this group is, and I actually kind of like that. It's interesting. Anyway. What are you replicating? Action potentials and electromagnetic fields, literally. So you're, you're designing hardware that does that? Yeah, hardware. It's a hardware solution. And the, the resonance is actually poised on a very complex, unstable equilibrium and um, inherits a lot of data about the outside world. Uh, and that's an experiment that I want to do in the next 12 months to verify that, and validate the parameters of it. What do you mean it inherits data from the, the outside system world? system in the brain is actually an input, not an output. Um, I can say that. Uh, don't believe me. I'll do the experiment and at the end of it I'll tell you. Okay? I'm very practical. I'm not interested in philosophical arguments. I'd rather get into the lab and do it for real. So. so you can't simulate it accurately enough with a digital computer you with can, that? Uh, I'll put it this way. You can make an artificial general intelligence with computing, but you'd have to compute the whole universe as well. And at the end of it, you wouldn't want to. It's you can do it, but you wouldn't bother because you'd have to know everything anyway. So why build an AGI? So you're saying it's actions that are, that are, I guess that you 
can't restrict the scope of the brain to inside the, the brain, in, inside the, no, the somehow, skull or the body. Somehow our mantle yeah. accesses the outside world in ways which are not obvious. You know, and, and that's, that's, is, is that conventional physics? Or? Yeah, that's conventional physics. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they flew, and then we got theory of flight. I'm going to build a cognitive thing and thereby learn how cognition works. So this could be fun on bananas. I don't know. You could so burn bananas, generate the electricity. <laughs> so it's actually still going to be running on just normal. Oh, yeah, it's just normal electronics. You're sort of positing a kind of special role for this quantum non locality and da da da. And there have been other people who've posed or suggested you know, special roles for quantum physics in the brain, such as Penrose's microtubules, da da da. Do you have any more evidence than he does? Your um, theory? Only what's, what the brain does it has to operate that way. There's nothing else there but electromagnetism created by ions that are going zing. That's what my thesis is about. My, th my PhD got accepted on Tuesday. Before the end of the year, when I do my silly hat ceremony thing. And, uh, so my PhD is actually on brain electromagnetism. And I figured out it where it comes from, which is, believe it or not, has been un under defined. So nobody's ever researched this stuff before? They've researched it, but they, the official origins of the electromagnetic field were unknown. Uh, so I figured out where it comes from and why. Both fields, the electric and the magnetic field. I don't think anybody's going to run out and get a PhD before you go to your student. <laughs> Oh, it's easy. It's just ion channel operation, transmembrane ions. Uh, imagine a thing that like that, five nanometers thick. Imagine a little charged atom with a plus charge on it, and it goes zing across there at the extravagant rate of two centimeters a second. It's gigantic. However, everything else all around it is going at ten thousand times slower. So these are actually like. Uh, you can imagine a swimming pool full of little plastic balls and you're on the side with a hole in the swimming pool and you fire another plastic ball like a rocket into the swimming pool of balls and it goes at the speed of sound and then goes and all the other ones go that. That's the way the ions move around the membrane and as it travels, as it travels that distance there it creates an electric field of in that direction and a circulating magnetic field like that and then millions of them together operating coherently add up and come out the scalp as an EEG or MEG and um, it's the coherence that, which is all important and when I mean that in a formal sense coherence So look at what's the space for the way neural modeling is going to change because think packages like neuron, the big capital letter neuron, the action potentials are going, are going to be 50% missing what they need to be accurate models. And that as the physiology seeps into the uh, modelers, the world of modelers, they'll suddenly find they have to upgrade everything in, 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 over the next year, coming years. Are you saying really the brain is far more processing power than we think? Are you suggesting that? The electromagnetic that? field has eight orders of magnitude of information content itself. That's without even mentioning the neuron. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it actually operates in the space between the neuron. So action potential is going to be going to go slower than what we can, down axons, you know the little pulses everyone likes. Yeah. It gets fired in the cell, the electromagnetic field from it goes line of sight. So you've got a speed of light line of sight influence directly to that point there, and at the same time, an action potential might go all the way and blah, 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 and then catch up later. Because again, they regulate the whole dynamics of the interaction between adjacent cells. It's called effapsis. Now you've got synapses. This link is called an effaps. So if there's many of these effapses going on at the same time, but they're actually just going directly through the brain matter, yep. but they should be really interfering with each other. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So if they're going in different directions, how do they ever get to the right place? They superpose, they, they cancel and they add up, and the, the neurons are actually located in space in ways that suit themselves. They actually move there when you're developing your body. And it's the movement and the growth of all the, the axon growth cones and all the dendrite growth cones 
all sway in the breeze of the field and they follow the lines of the field. The field is very under-examined. It's been ignored ever since Hodgkin and Hudson threw it away in 1952. Do you know anything about modelling? Um, I'm advanced physicists or anything, but does it matter what, like, you say you've got uh, these circuits building up a brain more or less, is it modelled on a human brain, is it just a bunch of circuits or is it... It's inspired by neurophysiology, membrane biophysics, but its relationship to particular cellular um, constructions like a cortical form. Nucleus in one of the deep structures is not necessary. And only certain brain structures make use of epapsis. There's high density structures in the hippocampus and the cortex and various other places. And, blue, and it's not proven yet, but the ones that are actually like this are the ones that generate consciousness. Do you believe in ESP? Can you, can, can uh, no, I jump from one brain to another. I think. That when if I get my chips into a brain and turn the pulse up a lot, I think we're going to start to see coherence at much longer distances. With humans, I don't think so because there's not enough juice. So I, I kind of I don't want to um, invoke any spooky bloody ESP uh, stuff. But I think the story isn't written yet. You know, robots will certainly be able to think at each other and what about to get there. Do like, um, I don't know if it'd be. Ethical. You do um, sort of examinations for Siamese twins who are connected to the head and their brains are kind of really close to each other. Do you think there would be some sort of ways that they'd yeah. be able to communicate? Yeah. Just how, um, how unified that brain is and how collective activity is. But they wouldn't be connected neuronally. I mean, they wouldn't have. They, could be, connect they could be nearby and yeah. influence some, you know, if they happen to overlap, like the stuff that comes out the scalp. Yeah. Was was actually somehow you know maybe if you go down deep into the you know, take off the five mils or so the, the skull get down to the throbbing grey dome and put them near each other I can see influences. Yeah. Oh. Strong enough that now that it's been discovered that everyone would agree that it has a noticeable effect on the mechanism of adjacent neurons or yes, other yes. bits. There's no like, there's no doubt that that it's strong enough to. Yeah. By uh, in May 2010, lead author Frolic, F R O H L I C. Another paper in Nature Neuroscience, lead author Anastazu, uh, in February this year. I think it's February. Mm. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, they've they've what they've it's been it's been a point of contention since before the 50s. There's a big battle. And the guys with the action potential have won because it was empirically really hard. And it's only after 60 years that we've managed to actually verify that tiny fields of the, of the order of 10 to the minus 5 volts per meter at the right time in the right place can dramatically Im impact the phase of an action potential. And in one cell, and it rapidly entrains the entire neighborhood. So the effect is there, it's just a matter of it filtering through the literature and people getting used to the idea. So, uh, but replication, in my mind, is completely untried. Zero, anywhere in the world, ever. So um, I'm going to have the first go at it and see what happens. Sorry? couple of years, you say? Um, well, I'm doing the first experiment over the next 18 months. And then it'll be scaled up for two or three years after that to something that demonstrates an array of gizmo. Uh, and that'll be about three years after that. And at that
that point, we then shrink the thing down uh, to some kind of technology. And I think the first thing that'll actually come out of it is actually a smart sensor. You can imagine a sensor that you teach, you put it near an object, and then you know the light on the back would go red, green, and it would detect with some level of um, accuracy, whether it's one object or the other. The, the thing is that there's nothing broadcast. It's not sending anything out. It's just sitting there. Yeah, I've met him. We had a seminar and workshop with him. Uh, and he was here uh, earlier this year. Yeah, yeah he's, he would disagree with me, but he's... He had, I haven't talked to him about my work, and it's pretty recent, so... Um, yeah, the ones that are involved, you might know Christoph Koch and Markram, the IBM Blue Gene guy. That, that second paper in Nature Neuroscience was one of them. They're, they're actually up the end of a list of authors in that second paper. So Koch and Markram are into the FAPSIS. And the other one is very well known, but not mainstream McCormick. And I'm visiting their labs in about a week. I'm going to Yale and uh, Caltech, to Yale to visit McCormick and Caltech to visit McCormick. Have I disturbed everything enough? I hope so. <laughs> anyway, it should be fun this weekend, I think. Don't <laughs> mull it. Ephapsis. So, yeah, Ephapsis. So, wow, really? So, so <coughs> now I'm just wondering, like, you've got um, action potentials and Ephapsis. Now, they both do relatively the same thing, but in different ways. Is that yeah, right? That's right. They're both responsible for two different regulatory mechanisms. And if you throw away the fields, the regulation is bad. That's why neural networks don't work so well. Okay. Because they threw away the fields and it's not there. If they put them back in and structured it in 3D, they'd all work a lot better. That's my plan. Would you be able to, um, do you think you'd be able to build a machine with just a FAPSIS and no um, action potential? No, they, one actually generates the other. It's just there's a non-unique relationship between the two. You can have one action potential can generate an infinite infinity of fields, depending on the ion channel layout and the, the dendritic trees and densities of ion channels and that kind of stuff. I've got videos. If anyone wants to see them, I've done it. I used a supercomputer to work out one just one action potential in one biologically realistic neuron. And it's like a it's like a lighthouse. You can imagine a bipolar a lighthouse that's shone in both directions, plus and minus, and it grows from the soma, the cell of the thing, it grows outwards, and then it moves like that in space in three dimensions, lines up with the axon, it's, it shrinks a bit, comes out, rotates again, then shrinks down to nothing. And it, it seems to avoid the dendrites, stays away from them. You know, pyramidal cells, they're highly polarised. They've got a lot of structure down in the soma and they've got a lot of structure away from the soma. And the reason is because the thing's set up to broadcast the aphapsis along the layer and down the column. But, well, so what, but not a lot, not non, uh, it doesn't communicate, they don't communicate through dendrites. They only, um, uh, well, what's happening is that if you could imagine this is one well, this is one cell this is another cell yeah. and, and this one's beam points down that way then it's it's uh, illuminating the dendrites in this cell so it's affecting the synapses in this cell oh so it doesn't uh, okay so it's not traveling along its own dendrites it's just no, no. interfering with other directly yeah. yeah it's just simple old classical electromagnetism <laughs> Interesting. Oh, yeah, I'm 
giving another a replay of my submission seminar tomorrow at Melbourne Uni in the medical faculty at four o'clock. I know it's late in the day, but if anyone wants to come along, you're welcome. Well, why don't you email me and I can forward along yeah. to any interested parties? I think but if you just snuck in and sat up the back, no one's going to mind. Oh, okay. So, all right, that could be a good thing to do just before transcending to the man. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I've got. How long is it going to last? Oh, just an hour. An hour? Until five, yeah. All right. Where about um, third, it's in the medical building off Grattan Street in the East Wing on the third floor. I've forgotten the name of the theatre, but you head when you go up the stairs, you head towards the south, and it's on the left. If you can, if you can email me the details, I can put it up in the singers. Yeah, sure. Okay. Blog or put it on Facebook. Yeah. I've got all my videos. Sure.